Our first speaker today is one of our panelists, Christian. So thank you, Carla, for a very thorough introduction of him. Uh, he is from the University of Bern, and he will be discussing protocols with asymmetric trust. Christian? Okay, this is about protocols with asymmetric trust. And of course, we think about consensus protocols here, like uh, in the whole workshop through the two days. And so before we can talk about Asymmetric trust, let's talk about this symmetric trust. This is probably what everybody here thinks about trust is, yeah, or what we are using today, which is that uh, we have a number of nodes and uh, the nodes are just defined by the numbers. They're not unique or distinguishable. They are indistinguishable. They have the same features with respect to failing in a protocol. So we trust only that a certain subset of them of a given size of not more than a given size is failing. And in the BFT, how we call this Byzantine consensus world, we need n bigger than 3f, but the, the most important case is actually the canonical case would be a strict majority n bigger than 2f. And uh, but I'm going to mostly talk about the Byzantine case here is also the way how we develop this. Yeah. How large this threshold is, it can be n bigger than 3f and bigger than 5f or something like this, depends on various efforts, but we know a lot of protocols like this. Just to give you a little background here, I mean, might be people have never seen this here. If you read and write to the storage location, this is at the heart of all those problems we are talking about here. Uh, there is this thing called a register that also occurs in consensus protocols implicitly where uh, participants can write or like a single participant can write, but if the value is stored in a distributed, the value is stored on all n nodes in the system. And there's just one node who can, or process here who can write and all, and just one who can read, but there has to be a certain consistency and liveness conditions satisfied. Namely that if something has been written, only that is read later. And so the typical protocol that you also know from a Byzantine, uh, with a Byzantine emulation of such a abstraction is that you add signatures, you let the processes sign what they are writing, and uh, what the, there's only one writer, you keep logical timestamps because otherwise a faulty uh, storage node can answer to you with an outdated value, and the writer increments this timestamp continuously. So, and then there is this crucial property here that we need a Byzantine quorum of replicas to acknowledge this yeah? right operation. We also need a Byzantine quorum of replicas or nodes to acknowledge a read operation. And then we are safe. Yeah? And so we have here an algorithm. I only want to look, I want you to look at this part here. It will come up later. And I only want to look up, you, uh, look, have you look at this part here because you've, know, you've seen this in the textbooks. Yeah? And so there are tons of protocols in this, in this model and uh, we call them consistent, reliable broadcast and uh, state machine replication blockchain protocols as well. As soon as, as long as they are permissioned in any form or in any related form. Huh? The important thing about this model here about what I call the threshold BFT model here is that all nodes are trusted equally and all nodes trust equally. Yeah? So all nodes share the same trust assumption. That's they, their subjective, their, their thing, their trust, uh, how they believe the others behave is not subjective. And in reverse, because the trust is only by the number, this first assumption here holds, this first conclusion holds that the trust placed on them is equal. We can generalize this. This has been done a long time ago. Namely that uh, they take the view that every node is special. Yeah, why should one node here fail as often as the other node? Why should we trust this node more than the other node? And this is indeed a picture that I show you here on the right, where we could say um, of these six nodes, remember before there were seven, uh, of these six nodes, there are two groups, the XYZ group and the PQR group on the lower half. These are the current systems here. Um, is what formalized this idea, namely that uh, we specify a so-called fail-prone system. Mark can write a bit that in 98. And from this, we can, we can enumerate here all the sets of nodes that may fail together. And we 
uh, as a complement get out the sets that we can use as quorums. And then we trust those for, for decisions in the protocols. And uh, formally, we can define this mathematically. Byzantine quorum system has then these and these properties, namely that is a consistency property and an availability property where every two quorums must overlap in at least one correct process because we now have this system uh, or this collection of failed prone sets and any the intersection of any two so-called quorums must uh, contain at least uh, a subset that contains at least more than strictly more than uh, uh, something that could fail and availability namely that we must find a quorum around and i think i would say that not much research has gone into this and uh, we are already at the next step but this is also an interesting thing where even uh, where, um, an interesting concept that we've just uh, started to look at also in our research on uh, threshold crypto uh, this generalized BFT model, where not all nodes are trusted uh, the same, but uh, the nodes trust equally. Everybody shares the same trust assumption. So what are asymmetric quorums then? How do we define asymmetric trust? Huh? So let's proceed to this. This goes back to saying, why should I uh, believe that this node is more trustworthy than another node? And that is basically giving the participants or, or uh, the, the, a very human not, um, feature, a very human uh, or, or also um, uh, something that people like to do, namely to trust in a way that they like. Because yeah? how can you debate about taste? Yeah, you can't. Yeah? So yeah, do you like it or you don't like it? Some people like this and some people like others. Yeah? And um, but there are definitely um, factors that influence how people trust and that should also be used in a protocols settings where it's not people, but uh, in order to build systems with trust, uh, we need to express something of that in protocols as well. Huh? So let's uh, give each participant in the network the ability to express its own trust assumption. Huh? Uh, here's a subjective trust assumption. This node down here, P, it trusts itself that it never fails. There are neighbors that it trusts more, namely the Q and the R node. Oops, I jumped uh, because they are close to it. And then there are the remote nodes up here, X, Y, and Z, and it trusts them less. Uh, so it trusts them only in the form that any out two of the, out of these three might fail because they are far away. And those that are far away, you usually don't trust them so well. Huh? And so we have another. Uh, this is actually a, a fail-prone system, a fault assumption of this node P. And the idea behind the sub asymmetric trust is now that every node can express its own uh, trust assumption like this. And if they all are uh, compatible with each other in a certain way, then they have a Byzantine quorum system that is asymmetric. Yeah? So every node would trust differently and nodes are trusted differently, especially. Yeah? This is not a new idea in blockchain systems because Ripple and Stellar have pioneered these ideas. Ripple certainly with their UNL idea, with their unique node list, where it's just a list of nodes that I happen to know and trust. And um, it's definitely the case that Ripple intended to, uh, to achieve some kind of BFD consensus. It's also become understood, meanwhile, that it doesn't in a certain ways uh, we've also looked into this uh, just recently with uh, some of my team here in Bern. And Stellar is also a slightly different formalization of some related ideas, but it doesn't answer uh, the challenge of how to take quorum systems into the asymmetric world. Yeah? So here's an example of how this could look like in all of the worlds we've, we've just shown. You'd have uh, a specification that says, there are at the top level like five nodes that have equal weight, but two of them, the ones more to the right here, they would be uh, composed uh, in, through different ways. And this is a very specific hierarchical decomposition. That's the one that's actually uh, used in Stellar blockchain from the config file. Yeah? But in general, we would be like, so we would like to be even more general in this. Yeah? We would. Coming now to the formalization of Byzantine quorum systems that uh, we put out uh, some uh, two years ago, which is a fail-prone system for each participant. 
And then by an array of such fail prone systems here, uh, we can define a array of quorum systems. So each participant has its own specific quorum system. PI has its quorum system P, uh, QI. And the consistency and availability conditions here, I'm not gonna read them for you, but you should read them in the paper or at least here later, um, say that whenever two of them interact and make the decisions, there is at least one correct guy behind the quorums there. Huh? And with these, we can also generalize the corresponding existence conditions for the Byzantine quorums. These are the so-called Q3 properties uh, to the B3 property for which uh, will tell us when such a quorum system exists. And then the uh, example before, if every participant has its own subjective trust assumption like this, will actually give you a asymmetric quorum system if we just rotate this view circularly around the circle. Huh? But I wanna talk about the change, the protocols that this implies, namely the stuff colored in blue, here is what we had in the normal protocol, will simply turn into uh, reformulations that you don't count messages, but you count uh, whether you have enough of uh, your friends telling you what is okay uh, for the register implication. Last but not least, um, so we, cannot, we can implement many different protocols with this uh, method. We can implement consensus also, randomized consensus. We have also a recent paper out. And uh, last but not least, what I wanted to mention here is, how do we compose such trust assumptions? This is a new field we've started to look into also. Suppose that we have two quorum systems, two groups with specific trust assumptions. How would they be able to merge or compose the trust assumptions automatically such that another quorum system um, res res uh, results from this? Yeah? And in a way, uh, through an algorithm, we can do this for traditional, generic and symmetric Byzantine quorum systems, and also for asymmetric Byzantine quorum systems. The reference is again here on the slide and also on our website, because I think my time is almost up. So I wanted to give you the summary of the asymmetric trust model, uh, which is now all nodes are trusted differently. And this is because all nodes trust differently. The underlying reason is that you cannot argue about uh, taste, that's the, uh, the uh, translation of this um, ancient um, uh, saying here, because it trusts, uh, taste is inherently subjective and so is uh, trust. So thank you for the attention and I'm looking forward to the questions in the discussion section.